Well, I got this friend named TJ Clyde who sees this strength I got inside I got and he says to me, hey, I want some of that. <laughs> I said to Clyde, it's easy as a one, two, three. Just say this simple prayer with me. He said, not me, bub, but I still want some, some of that. Good morning. Well, you can't find it doo, 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 in a bottle. <laughs> Anyone tell us what that's... I can't even find it on Amazon Music. Your horoscope. I can't remember some. The fact that you know that some much of, of it. Yeah. I need me some We're of that. We're not actually on, are we? Yeah. We're on. Oh, yeah, we I thought we had enough... Day. Oh, okay. Hey, oh, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we, we wake, wake up. up. We do um, Shaka Khan I'm today. We do some of that. And Car- oh, you were supposed to I tell did. him. I didn't mean to sing all that. It was awesome. Does anybody know who Carmen is? I love Carmen. He was one of our favorite. In that, oh, didn't he have a fast a food man. one? I got to meet him a what couple was his times. Fast food? He came to the church. He was a great, such a great guy. We had him like four or five years ago. Yeah, he's epic, amazing, great music, mm. and fast food one. What was the man fast food God. one? I don't remember the fast food one. Why don't I remember? That? I don't know. Anyway, uh, we have a scripture for your day. We're going to pray over your day. And thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like it right now. It really helps us out uh, a tremendous amount. Yeah. And if you subscribe, type in, uh, type in where you're from in the comments. Today we're going to be in Matthew 6.31. And we're actually talking about the message that you taught, not yesterday, but the week before right. on Sunday. And you can watch that uh, on YouTube. It's amazing. You really talked about how uh, happiness, the goal of happiness in life. And if you have been searching for happiness and you're watching this today, I can tell you what, you find out an awful lot about the key to godly happiness right. in this message. And this is something that will put Zoloff out of business. We talked about that. And I, when, when you said that in the message, I said to my wife, what's Zoloff? Because I think of Zoloff as the guy who's in the machine in the movie Big that gives you oh, your wish. Zoloff, the man. I don't know if that's so his thought, name. Is he Tell us about what his like, name was. I don't remember what the guy from Big's name was. Yeah, but he, he's the... Was it Zandar? I don't know. Oh. Zoloff. Zoloff. What is Zoloff? Zoloff is a, it's a drug to make you happy oh, with all the side effects. But God's One got, includes leakage. <laughs> God's got a pill that doesn't come with leakage. No leakage. It's and a leakage-free pill. God's joy. Jesus said, my joy I give to you. I don't give as the world gives. So, so there is a joy that we can have, and you talked about how to get there. You gave right. keys. You gave very simple, practical keys. Well, it's out of Philippians chapter 4, and Paul gives us the key. He's like writing the happiest book from the, of the Bible in prison, yeah, which is to me that's, that's always how I write. I'm like God, you're you're so amazing because he wasn't write, writing it from a beach somewhere where you go. Well, yeah. of course you're happy, Paul. He's writing it from one of the worst places you could be. As a Christian, you, good chance you're going to die in the next few days. You're going to be killed. You're going to be executed. But even in, he was like, even if I die, to be to die is gain. I think the devil was annoyed at everything. He's like, ah, and he's like, he's happy. How is he happy? <laughs> Yeah, he's writing he's a like, book. Who put him in prison? He's mad as hell. He's like, who did that? Now he's going to write a book. They're going to be talking about it for, I don't know what we're doing around here, folks. We gotta get How some... did you stop Paul? <laughs> I threw him in prison. He's still going. And he's still happy. He's still happy. And so, well, a lot of times I think what we do is we, uh, by the way, we're at uh, Arizona Barbecue. We're at That's Arizona. why you're hearing a phone ring. We're actually at a place of business. Uh, it's an amazing best... restaurant. Oh, if you're in Arizona, come down to Gilbert. Go to Arizona Barbecue. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? You know, it's our needs oftentimes. Right. Like, I need love. I need to this. get rid of my loneliness. I need to, I need, I'm, I need, I need, I need, mm. I, I need more money. I need more happiness. What's going to make me happy? And from the- Dr. Leo Marvin! From the position- Remember when he's all, I need, I need, need me, 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 my, me, my. me, me, my, me, me. Give me, give me, give me, I need, I uh, need, uh, I need, I need, give me, give me. And go, it's Jesus like, God's got your, the Father has your needs. He knows what you need. Right. Don't get your needs met out here because Satan's going to bring you stuff that doesn't work. Right? right? And maybe you need a father, right? right. You let, that father wound is so, very strong. And somebody's, somebody, you somebody keep, has, go ahead. No, what I was going to say, so you, I love that. You, you have a father wound in there. So you feel like, okay, I got to get my need for a father fulfilled out here. Yeah. And it goes from empty to empty to empty relationships. Because no man can fill the hole left by a father. But every time you but find God, out. God the father can. He says, I'm father to the fatherless. And you find out throughout the Bible, anytime that you say I have a need, there's a scripture that goes for it. Well, oh, I just need to be smarter. He says, but I, I'll give you the mind of Christ. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Everything that you say, oh, I need some handled. joy. He goes, well, I'll give you a fullness of joy. I need peace. I'll give you a peace that surpasses your understanding. <laughs> so God wants to f- meet all the needs according to his I need rest. Story. He says, rest in 
me. And sometimes we look at someone who's who has a certain action, and we think, well, what they need to do is stop that action. So right. we say, okay, well, you're an alcoholic. Stop being an alcoholic. And and but you know the reason that that a person might become an alcoholic is because they're broken inside. And you don't know what they've been through. Right. You don't know the depression, the tragedy that's hit them in their life, and how 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 deeply they felt that wound. Right. So they drink because they're yeah. hurting. Because the, and we talked about that the need drives the action. So, so we, we think, say stop, stop the drinking. action. The, but Jesus, how long does that last, though, Jason? It doesn't. It doesn't because you can only keep it up for because so long. Because the need gets stronger it's and stronger hard, it's and stronger hard. And until you can one do day. It. You can live your whole life, I think, with a good amount of self control and do it. But that's not what Jesus. How Jesus wants you to live. No, He says, let's get the need met here. Now you no longer need the action. So what does Jesus do? How does He meet the need? He heals the heart. He heals that wound. He brings forgiveness and blood and redemption. He gets you back into, and then now you don't need to drink. Now there's still the chemical addiction. You'll have to beat that. Right. But you, you're not driven by that deep need that right. caused you to start And drinking. you're not once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Of course not. I like what Casey Treat said. He says, I, I don't buy into that once. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So he beat the addictive side, which is the, the physical side of it. Yeah. And once that's gone, it's gone. He said, but the inside stuff, he goes, God took care of that. Only God can heal that. Only God can heal that. And so, you know, as long as I'm trying to get my needs here. Yeah. See, you're trying to get your needs here. I'm trying to get my needs here. And nobody's yeah. getting. The problem that you find in marriages is you got two people trying to get their needs met this way. Right. When you get one person at least or both going, okay, God, you meet my needs. As God fills me up, now I have enough to give to somebody else. You're right. You're like, I need love today. I need encouragement. Give me, give me, give me, right. give me. And you're trying to make a withdrawal from your spouse. But sometimes the spouse is not going to be. They the, don't have it. They don't have the cup that you need. But Jesus has the cup that you need. Right. Come to me, all who are thirsty. And we don't want to, to, to I want to make sure that you know that, that addictions are real and impossible, right. quite impossible to overcome. And if you've overcome drinking or a drug addiction through that, that strength and that willpower, geez. Good for you. We applaud you. But we also want you to know that God can heal the things that are happening on the inside that started that. So you don't have to dig in. And all of us have stuff to heal on the inside. Oh my gosh. All of us, and we're driven by those needs. See, Satan wants to play in the playground of your needs. So when you have a need, he comes to you and says, well, try this. Right. Doesn't he? That's what he did with Eve. Wow. (laughs) Right? Here, let me come. He tried it with Jesus. He goes, here you go. Let me give you. Are you hungry? You're hungry. Because Jesus had a need for hunger, did he not? He had a need in 40 days. Who did he say would give him food? God. Oh, wait a second. He didn't say, I'm going to go down to the Burger King. Nope. He right away pointed the enemy back to the fact that, wait a second, you don't meet my needs. No. He says, God's going to meet my needs. Well, I'm going to make you ruler over this. He's like, no. Actually, God's going to make me ruler. No. It, and that, that's the thing, too, is Satan's are always giving you a shortcut. But you yeah. can feel good right now. Real quick. Yeah. But it's always a band-aid. It's better. You know, be patient because God's way is totally worth the wait. Right. And I love, I love what Paul said, though. He says, God will meet... Some, yeah. most, uh, the majority. He says he'll meet Few. all your needs. Yeah. And in there was the secret because he says I've I've learned the secret to being happy. Mm-hmm. He's like I'm content in whatever circumstance because I know this right. that in the midst of whatever storm I'm in, that God will meet my needs. It, it says in um it, it goes on to say in the scripture that that for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. He knows what you need. Right. But seek first the kingdom of God. So when you think kingdom of God, we're thinking of God's, it's God's kingdom. It has everything in it that you need. That's everything all. you will ever need in life is in God's kingdom. It's this great big... It's like a Walmart superstore. <laughs> He's got peace, joy, love, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. He's got all... Pizza the, rolls. He's going to hook you up. In his kingdom, it's all the li- life and life more abundantly. And then he says this, and all these things will be, he said, and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. So his righteousness is the righteousness that comes by faith. It's talked about in Romans chapter right. three. It's not my righteousness because my righteousness can't get me in the kingdom of God. No, it's, it's, it's like but trying it's to get into the price club and you don't have the card. You so can't Jesus, get in. Jesus earned you a free, he paid the price in full for you to enter the kingdom of God. He hands you the free right. pass. You walk in and then there's your stuff and you go, oh, I need that. Go get it. It's TSA pre-check. It is TSA free check. That's what Jesus is. He's, he gets you through. You avoid the line. You avoid the hassle. Yes. You don't have to take your shoes off to get the promises of God. No. You just go right in. Yes. So when we fly, I've got pre check. I hate it. <laughs> I have envy. He has pre check. I have envy. Because if I'm with him and he's like, oh, and then, you know, when you go through pre check, they like play music Yo, and they, it's so they have fun. a water cup that they're yeah. handing you and you kind of splash it. They put a little bathrobe on you. They roll out some <laughs> carpet and then it's And Jason's incredible. just in this long. 
herded. She's being herded over there. We I'm get being to, we, get, we get to the gate. We're just relaxing for half an hour. Here comes Jason. I was his violated. Belt on. I literally his shoes was violated. <laughs> and that's what the world does. The world violates. Yeah. But God has the pre-check. Yeah. And this, uh, we'll just kind of close with this, Matthew chapter 9 and verse 20, the woman with the issue of blood. I love this. Pastor Kelly, my wife, she talked about this on the weekend during the, um, the, the she gives a word during where the offering goes. And she, she talked about the woman who went and got what she needed. So she saw Jesus. She had an issue of blood. She'd been bleeding from, she'd been to a lot of doctors. She spent a lot of money on doctors. Nobody could heal her. Nobody could fix her. And she saw Jesus and she's like, well, that's what I need. Right. She walked. She just walked right up to him and touched him. She went and got it. She went and got her. Give me that. That's mine. Right. Give me my healing. I mean, my, Jesus, I mean, go, oh, somebody just took something out of my house. <laughs> he did say that too. <laughs> He's like, who it's touched so me? Who t- and then everybody's like, everybody touched. A lot of people are touching you. Yeah. What are you being all? No, no. Somebody came and got something. Uh huh. Somebody got, picked they, my pocket. They took something. But you know, he wasn't mad that he, no. he said, "Go, your faith has healed you." Because when my kids come in my house and take my stuff, I'm not mad. No. I'm like, that's your stuff. Your stuff is my stuff. And how much better is our God at saying, hey, look, your stuff is my stuff. We have an amazing Father God. Whatever you need. Whatever your needs are out there today as you're watching this. So you need joy, he says, I'll give you joy. You need peace, I'll give you peace. You need rest, I'll give you rest. You need fulfillment, I'll give you fulfillment. Yes. You, need, you need smartness, I'll give, you, I'll give you smartness. Whatever your needs are, mm-hmm. God will give. And what Paul was saying to us that when we're content where we're at, see, here's the problem. You have to watch the, the teaching is when I lose my contentment, uh, just like a spoiled three-year-old who's not content with what they have at Walmart, right? Right. They're all about what they want. Right. And when we treat our wants like needs, but when a child is content with what they have, as a parent, I want to give them their wants. Mm. And I believe that when we learn to be content, as God provides to us, that contentment brings us joy. Mm. And then all of a sudden, the things that we want in God's timing begins to be brought into our life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, bless them, guide them, direct them, Lord. Help us to shift the focus of our needs, that the world can't meet our needs, that the, that the boss can't meet my needs, that, that I, I don't need this person to meet my needs, but you become my need, need meter. You're the one that meets every one of my needs. And when it begins to flow from you to me, I can then go into my day, into my world, into my life, and I can begin to sow those things into the people you've entrusted me with. I've got love, so now I can give love. I've got peace, so I can give peace. I've gotten my encouragement from you, so I can encourage others, Lord. We thank you and praise you for a blessed day for him in jesus name amen amen well watch this clip and so the bus boy comes on over and 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 here's what i need holly's not with us so i can get bread what i need because the bread gestapo is not around is i need some of your outback bread so i said hey i need some need some bread he said i said oh yeah and i want to get the the uh second most unhealthy food in the planet right now if you didn't know this look it up it's the blooming shrooms you know what's number one is the blooming onion so i'm living healthier i'm number two so i said and he, and he goes oh uh you can order that on your little the little kiosk there and so i go to grab it and my dad goes no no, no i got this if i could go back in time <laughs> Because I didn't know that my dad ordering on that thing was going to be... He, he battled, and he calls it a robot. That's what he calls it. And then everyone that walks by while he's having this battle with the robot, he's like, you know, do you remember the day when humans used to take your order? And now we got machines that are doing this. And he is pushing. And I know to order the shrooms, it's about three pushes away. He's now pushed it about 28 times. And he's like, I just ordered games. We have games for the whole table now. A cocktail? I don't want a cocktail. And he did, and he made the kiosk, the robot, do something that the robot was not designed to do. He ordered something that was not, I don't even think it's even on the menu. I think he got something from Panda Express. I don't know what he got, <laughs> but when it arrived, it was not the blooming mushrooms that we ordered. And everybody's like, I don't know how he got that, but he got there somewhere on the little kiosk. So I need things to hurry up, but it's busy. Our favorite waitress uh, showed up, uh, and she's just great. She's amazing. At least we got, we got her. And so she's like, sorry, we're so busy. And so we, we placed our order and and she kept coming to the table she's apologizing i still have no bread by the way i keep forgetting to ask her i keep asking the bus boy but he must be working with holly i don't know if her and holly have had a conversation but he ain't bringing me no bread right 
Our meal finally gets there. We've got there at six. It's now 7.25 when our meal arrived. And I needed to be out there a long time earlier. Now, when the waitress had come over to take our order, my parents are so cute. And, and they're like, you know that he's the lead pastor at the church right up the street. And they love to do that. They're like, he's so funny. Right, and I'm like, just stop it. They're like, it's almost like she wants me to do a joke right there. Let me give you, a, I don't have no jokes right now. <laughs> And so they're like, you should go to church. And her response was, she's like, ah, you know that response was like, yeah, I'll do that sometime. Okay, yeah, okay. Right, and off she went. It was real uncomfortable. It was all right, though. It's what we do. I don't mind doing that. And so 7.25, we got, got our food and everything else. And, and then I remembered, I didn't order Holly's meal. Oh, my God. So, so I, I said, hey, I got to put in Holly's meal. And so now it's 7.55 when Holly's meal comes out, and it's time to pay. And I'm like, oh, let me pay. And I went to grab the kiosk, and my dad grabbed the kiosk from me. I'd have paid $1,000 not to have him pay. It had nothing to do with paying. It had to do everything with him battling the kiosk again. So he began to go on a battle with R2-D2, unlike any other battle I've ever seen before. It lasted, Peyton will tell you, about 15, 20 minutes. And I got the tail end on video. Throw the video up on there, because finally I'm like, this is going to be good. <laughs> Here, honey. Grandpa's so, so livid. Don't burn my car. It's just, no, I need that. It shows me here. He talks to it the whole time. <laughs> Mom comes over. <laughs> Grandpa's so, so livid. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's it. We don't have time to watch the whole thing. It'll take an hour. And so... <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not excited. The waitress came over and they had to get a manager because he went so deep in the programming, they couldn't figure out how to get him out of that thing. <laughs> so we finally paid. It was after 8 o'clock now. It's like two hours. And as we're about to leave, because remember, I needed to be out of there. The waitress came over, and, she, and I don't know what had happened in the last two hours of her life. And she says to us, she goes, what time is your church services on Sunday? I'd like to go. And we're able to say 11. And here's my point. Had we left an hour and 15 minutes earlier, her heart would not have been prepared for the purpose that God had. Like, share, subscribe, thumbs up. That's right. If you do subscribe, make sure you type in where you're from in the comments. And uh, we have a parenting event coming up. We do. Yeah. Train up a parent. And, you know, it's really kind of what we're talking about. When, when a child is given all their wants growing up, mm -hmm. they, they grow up very unhappy. And we have, as parents, have to learn to give our children not what they want, but what you need. That's right. And what you need and learning and teaching our children to be content, as you and I were. I had put that in the sermon, too, that you and I were sent outside with a spoon. Go play. And what do we do? We play all day. Oh, and some of the, degrees out. Some of the best times of my life yeah. were with my brother with a spoon in the backyard. Yeah, it's not really about how much stuff you have, is it, in no. life? To be happy, to be mm -hmm. content, to learn how to be happy. Yeah. And so we're going to teach a lot about uh, uh, how to... We're really going to equip families to win. That's our goal. Right. With the, the, the Train Up a, a Parent event, equip families to win. So we have a, a video that we're going to be playing uh, off and on as we get ready for this event coming up in, in September. We just encourage, we want the whole valley Fly to go. In. It's a valley-wide event. We're doing it at five locations, I think. Are we doing it at Florence, too? Uh, four, sorry. Four, four sir. Four Three, of our, sir. Four of our locations we're doing. A, it's going to be incredible. If you happen to live in Arizona somewhere, you can find one pretty close to you. Well, hold on. We're doing one, two, four. <laughs> and then right you after the... You missed the joke. I did. Three, sir. <laughs> Three, sir. Uh, I'm stuck in the advertisement right now. <laughs> yes. Three, sir. Five is outright. Now I'm in. Now I'll never go back to the advertisement. And right, right uh, the event is, uh, it's a one night only event, but it is, uh, I think it's 6.30 to 9. And how much, it's like, it has to be $1,000. I mean, we're giving you priceless information. No, we're doing it for free. Wow. Yeah, the event is completely free. But the child care is $1,000. There's no, I don't think there's any cost for child care either. Oh I my gosh. I think we just watch the kids. That's awesome. Yeah. We'll see you there.